Dear brothers and sisters, as we draw now to the beginning of the month of September, we remember the beautiful solemnity of the Assumption and we look forward to the beautiful feast of the birth of Our Lady, which we will celebrate on Saturday of this coming week, well, next Saturday. St. Peter Damien, a great doctor of the Church, member of the Order of Monks founded by St. Romuald, the Camaldolese Order of Hermits, writes beautifully about the birth of Our Lady. And in her birth, in her birth, he beautifully compares her to the dawn, something which is particularly apt in respect of this particular moment of her life, because Obviously, when one is born, one is, one's life is just beginning, like the new day at the time of dawn. And he says, referring to a verse from the book of Canticle of Canticles, She comes forth like the dawn. And he goes on to reflect, Our first father was made in the image and likeness of his creator in the full light of day. What could be more wonderful for a created being than to share in the Creator's likeness? He granted him the everlasting image, but the likeness was still to be achieved. Man was to become like his Creator. Yet he rejected the honour of such a privilege, delivering himself over to death into the darkness along with all his descendants. Darkness covered all the earth until the coming of the Virgin. There was none who could escape the shadows, none to disperse them. But with the coming of the Virgin, dawn arose. Mary makes known the true light, and by her nativity causes the most radiant of mornings to shine. She is the morning star. She is that dawn who follows, or rather, from whom is born the Son of Justice. He who alone surpasses her in splendor. Now, in this brief account of the creation and fall of man, and with reference to the mystery of the incarnation of our Lord Jesus and the redemption that he would work, there is contained pretty much the whole truth about man. In it, we find the way that we must go traced out for us. Because Adam fell, and because in falling he marked all his descendants with the effects of original sin, or with, we can say, original sin, but even its effects remain after baptism, we now, even more than Adam in the garden, have to work if we are to become all that God is calling us to become. For we have not so much to work to accept the grace which he wishes to give us by proving our faith, but we have to do this now against the burden of all sorts of disorderly inclinations which we find within ourselves, against the weight of our own vices, against the false maxims of the world and against the constant pressure exerted against us, morally speaking, by the devil and those who are with him. So we have our purgation to work through. But then there is also a role for illumination. We heard how Adam's sin cast him into darkness so also the birth of the Virgin was the birth of light. There is a kind of illumination because having fallen away from God, man now is in a state of darkness. It is difficult for him to clearly appreciate where his true good lies. He is easily distracted one way and another. Sometimes he is quick to accept the false good or the superficial good as his true good, as his end, as his objective, as the purpose of his life. As, for example, when we live for such and such a person, or I live for my work, say. 
So illumination is necessary as well, that we might see God and seeing him truly love him. And then there is a place also for a journey towards union. Because we have to, seeing him, truly adhere to him with the full power of our wills. You remember, dear brothers and sisters, that at Fatima, Our Lady said to Sister Lucia, My Immaculate Heart will be your refuge and the way that leads you to God. Now, it's significant that Our Lady pointed, so to speak, to her heart. Her heart. The heart is the source of affectivity. It's the thing which loves. It's the deepest part of a person, but it's that part which is involved in making and in following through concrete choices. So, dear brothers and sisters, we see that the terrible confusion which was caused in the human race by the first sin, compounded by actual personal sin, which we have all committed, some more, some less, but all of us are marked by it and its effects to some extent, has left us in a very sorry state. We really need the light of the Blessed Virgin Mary, but more than this light, we need also her very real help. We need her very real help to choose the good and to adhere to it with all our heart. This is why the Blessed Virgin Mary is so well praised when we recognize her as mother in our lives. And the Second Vatican Council went out of its way to describe Our Lady in terms of one who lovingly accompanies us along our journey. When it speaks about her having been assumed into heaven, or when it talks about her being in heaven now in glory, it says that she never ceases there to pray for us and to assist us until she has brought each and every one of us into heaven. This is what she wants. But the way the Council Fathers described this activity of the Blessed Virgin in, in the wonderful Constitution Lumen Gentium on the Church, Chapter 8, makes it quite clear that the mediation of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to put it in simple terms, her motherly help, accompanies us from the beginning of our journey right to the very end, from where we start out in a condition of sin, of destitution spiritually, to where we finish. Where is it that we finish? God wants us to finish in heaven. Until we have entered, so to speak, the gates of heaven, Our Lady's work is not yet accomplished. And she does this with the gentleness and indeed the special power of a mother. Now the special power of a mother is one which involves love. But this is where illumination is important. And dear brothers and sisters, this is where prayer is important for each and every one of us. For prayer is a most important place, so to speak, in which we find ourselves in contact with God, with Our Lady, and seeing them, experiencing their presence in our life, especially in moments of prayer, especially in moments of prayer, we are able to grow in our knowledge and love of them. And so Mary's presence in our life draws us, attracts us, comforts us, gives us constant strength. The Holy Father, in a uh, a homily which he recently preached on the solemnity of the Assumption, beautifully says that Mary's presence in our life is coextensive with that of God. Having been so united to Jesus, her Son, who is truly God, in his incarnation, in the redemptive mysteries of his passion and death and resurrection, and now sharing in his total victory over sin and death in, well, in Jesus' case, in his resurrection and ascension into glory, Mary in her assumption, Mary is also now able to be present wherever God is present. 
we can say that this is a way of expressing the reality that Mary is mediatrix of all grace. Where grace is and works, Mary is and works. And this includes in the depths of our heart. And so as we draw from the wellsprings of salvation, whatever they may be, the seven sacraments of the church, prayer, our devotional life, works of mercy, the practice of virtue for the love of God, all of these things somehow bring us into contact with Christ, with his grace, necessarily we discern there, if we look carefully, also the presence, or can I say the features, the face of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So dear brothers and sisters, we must imitate Mary's heart so that adhering with the, every fibre of our strength to God's will in our life and persevering in this, we might constantly grow richer in grace and become every day more and more like the Blessed Virgin Mary. But in this process, it is she herself who helps us in a wonderful way. Let us give God thanks then for the gift of our mother, assumed into heaven, but still close to us now, who is a light for us and a very real help. Let us ask him to make us every day more and more like her, more and more her child, more and more, as St. Maximilian would say, her possession, more and more one with her, until Mary, in this way, brings us into the everlasting happiness of heaven and the happiness of receiving a participation in her own beatitude in the life to come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.